had a good conversation with uh, Pastor Kelly uh, this morning. He called me, and uh, he just called me at just the right time. And he's like some of you guys. He's got an iPad and don't know what button to push about half the time. So he'll call me, and I'll have to kind of close my eyes and pretend I've got one because I don't have an iPad anymore. And I have to go, okay, now do this and do this and do this. And so it got him. It worked. What I told him to do, it worked. But then we just got into a, a good conversation. And I needed uh, the encouragement. And uh, he sends his love and greetings to y'all. He, uh, uh, he said God's good to him. And uh, I told him to be in prayer for us and our work and our labor. We're going to feed some people this weekend. Uh, we have probably close to about 5,000 pounds of food. Um, corn, uh, what they call maize, and, um, and beans. And that's their staples there in Turkana. And there's been a lot of fighting among tribes up there, and so th it's a very critical time. And I want to say thank you to you folks here at Bethel, and I want to say thank you to you folks online and I want to tell God thank you. Uh, I wept today just thinking about them. And uh, we take for granted the food that we throw away out of our refrigerators. And um, to live in a place where they don't have any, uh, it's, a, it's a very sobering thought if you think about it. So... Whenever, I'm a big fan of when, whenever you eat, tell God thank you. And if you forget about it before you do it, catch yourself and think about it while you do it. Okay? But just tell God thank you for all that He's blessed you with and all that He's given you. And it could all be taken away in a moment. And so just remember that. We're singing that song and um, it kind of makes you think about death a little bit. Death is our last enemy. And it's really not one that I'm looking forward to facing, but I'm glad I've got something waiting for me on the other side of that. And uh, so just kind of keep your mind, listen, we're living in dark days and they're not getting any better. And I'm telling you, I, I, I maybe it, my attitude right now has just been shaped by what I've been looking into. But I'm telling you, it is a very evil, very evil time out there. Okay? Uh, pray for... Reg's daughter, who is a Missouri state legislator, she has helped the House of Representatives in Missouri pass a very tough anti-abortion bill. It now has to go to the Senate, and of course it's got to go to the governor. We, we hope and believe that he'll sign it, whatever it is. But just pray about that, because the venom that comes out of the abortion crowd, you got to understand, I want to say this, they're murderers. They are, they are absolutely, they have blood on their hands. And I don't care if you don't like that. God gives man life. And life begins, it's even proven scientifically. Life begins at conception. Because that child, the DNA is significantly different than its mother's. It is not a piece of that woman's tissue. It's its own biology. So that's what we believe. And, you know, Reg and I were talking about, he was asking God, you know, God, why are you allowing so many babies to be killed? And it will be one of the things that God will get this nation for if we don't repent. So pray about that, and then there's, we, I've been talking to some people, there's still a lot of people sick. Uh, Sister Gloria's here, she's been sick, she has touched pneumonia now, so pray for her. Linda Toomey's still in the hospital with the flu, but that flu was a blessing, because had it not been for her getting the flu, when they got her to the hospital, for some reason, she told me today, she said, I have no idea why they did this, but they ran a test on her leg and found a blood clot. She was headed for another stroke, probably what he, might have killed her or crippled her real bad. Had it not been for the flu, and she said this, had it not been for the flu, I might have been dead by now. Of course, when you have the flu, you kind of hope, <laughs> I don't want to live through this, you know. So pray for her and lift her up. Uh, Sister Bonnie, pray for her. Brother Roy, 
pray for him. Huh? Yeah. Uh, what are you saying? Oh, yeah, Jaden. My grandson. I, could, I couldn't, I'm going, who's Jane? That's what I heard. So anyway, yeah, pray for Jaden. He's sick, and uh, there's, it's just a lot of this stuff going around. And it's hard to get rid of. So pray for folks that are not here, whether they're not here because, you know, something's got them or they're not here because something worse has got them. So just pray for God's people to be encouraged in days like this. All right. Uh, get your Bibles out and uh, we're going to talk about salvation, how it's kept. Okay. And. This is going to be a little bit controversial. Not everybody's going to agree with what I say, but I want you to know I follow the Bible. Okay, I believe what it says. And um, I just believe that the worse it gets outside, the better it ought to get on the inside. And we ought not follow the world. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. And Lord, I know that my heart is heavy. Because I know some things that are going on in people's lives. And I'm just very concerned. And I pray God that you would help. They need help. And it's the only kind of help, God, that can only come from heaven. And Lord, that's the kind of help that people need now. And I pray, dear God, that you would be good to your people. And help them, Lord, and help them through areas of life, issues of life, sicknesses, depressions, financial woes, relationships busted. God, there's just a lot of things going on with people right now, and I'm just really, I'm really grieved. And Lord, so I'm asking God for your help tonight in front of these people. And Lord, let that be a blessing and encouragement to somebody, Lord, who, God, they just need to call on you and ask you for help for themselves. They may have prayed for other people, and that's all well and good, but God, there's some people tonight that just really need to reach heaven, and I pray, God, that they would do that. And Father, teach us, Lord, how to get through this world. You've given us one day, one day only. You told us not to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself when it gets here. And the things that happen will happen. And there's not a thing that we can do about it to alter the course that you have laid out for our lives. So Father, help us, Lord, in our worst days to only trust you. And Father, I thank you for the book. This book is absolutely amazing. It is everything that we need in life. It is everything, God, that we need in our marriages. It is everything that we need, Lord, to help us deal with sin in our own lives. It's everything that we need to keep us going in faith. And I pray, dear God, that you would just open up your hand wide and feed your people, Lord, and, and bless them. And Lord, we're like the man in the Bible that comes to his neighbor in the middle of the night saying, we have friends on a long journey, and we have nothing to give them. Lord, would you rise and give us bread tonight? And Father, I have nothing to give these people, except, Lord, what comes down from heaven from you. So I pray, dear God, that both here and everywhere, Lord, that you carry this message. God, that your people, Lord, would be edified, they would be blessed, they would be encouraged, Lord, to not give up to not quit, to keep walking, keep going, keep working. And I pray, dear God, that you would just pour that down in our soul tonight for the people that need it. I pray, dear God, that you would uh, just go with us tonight, open up our eyes, help us to see wonderful things from your word. We pray your blessings now upon all the people, Lord, that we've mentioned. Those who have needs, we ask you, God, to bless them richly. We pray in Jesus' name, all of God's people said, amen. Psalm 78. Now, what we're doing is we're looking at uh, issues of Bible doctrine. We're looking at why we believe, what we believe, 
If we say that, you know, we believe that we're saved by Christ's blood, then why do we say that? If we say that we believe that we're saved by grace, why do we say that? If we say that it's not with the works of the law, then why do we say that? If we say that the, we believe the Bible is right in 100% in every word that it says, I got a, I, I got a letter today, I, it's, it's a lot of pages, so I haven't read it all, but I open it up, and just the first paragraph, bless, I ought to run back in my office and get it. It just blessed my soul. But what it said was, we, we just cannot fathom how our Bible would have one thing wrong with it. Because if one thing is wrong with this Bible, it throws the whole thing, the whole thing's off. If God has one error in his word, what can you trust? What do you have left to trust in? What do you have left to, to sink your claws in, to pull you out of the pit you're in? What do you have left to give you hope and, and joy and understanding of what's going on in your life? And so I just believe the Bible, and, I, and I'm glad that God has put that in my heart. Because I know a lot of people that don't believe it. Now, let's say they believe part of it. They say, well, I believe, that, you know, the original manuscripts. Those are gone. Original manuscripts are gone from the Bible. They don't exist. So how can you believe the Word of God, the inspired, inerrant? How can you believe the Bible is inerrant? Because the Bible that you believe in does not exist anywhere on the face of the earth. So I'm glad that God preserved His Word. I'm, God, I'm glad that God figured out what language I would speak, and wrote a Bible in that language. So we're looking at why we believe what we believe, and what do we believe about salvation? What do we believe about, you know, we've, I've seen in my lifetime, I have seen a lot of people come in and leave. And I don't mean just leave this and go to another church. I mean leave. Walk away. Some of them died in that condition. Now, I'm going to just read scriptures. And what I believe is that those who are really qualified in God's terminology of salvation, how God says it's applied, is that they kept believing. I mean, think about it. Somebody goes to the doctor. The doctor says, we found the tumors. You have three months to live. How does that person deal with that if they don't trust what God said I mean how can you how can you handle that you're facing your own mortality how in the world can you deal with that if you don't trust God's word in what it says do you lose faith can you lose faith can you quit can you walk away I've seen it happen and so I would say according to scripture that doesn't qualify for the way God applies salvation. I believe those who go to heaven are the ones who kept believing even in the face of the storms of life. We are, we are approaching an age and we're, in fact, we're in a time right now where Brother Kelly and I were talking about, you know, our, our work in social media getting the word out there on the internet because we're finding then that there are people who they like what we're saying. And there's a lot of them out there still. There are still people out there who still believe the word of God, but they're in little patches here and there and they're separated out and they're scattered and if they can't find a church in their area that still believes the word of God, that still holds on to it. They can't find that. And so with the social media, we're able to reach those people and, and we're drawing them to, you know, our, he's drawing them to his ministry, I'm drawing them to ours. And so we're using that. But that, if you flip that over, every, every false doctrine has now found fertile ground in the internet. Every weird cult, every fake spirit, every false gospel, every... Every uh, idea of Jesus that is not the Jesus of this Bible 
has also found its people in the world that have fallen into it and believe it. And there are people who one day said, oh, I believe the Bible, I believe Jesus, I believe, and I believe it was saved by grace. I and they, they believe these doctrines. Then all of a sudden they get on the internet. And they start watching this YouTube video, and they start reading that blog, and, they, and all of a sudden they get influenced, Facebook posts, they get influenced by a meme that they look at for 10 seconds, and, they, and it catches them, and they say, okay, that's what I now believe. And that's, a, how much leaven does it take to ruin the whole lump? A little bit. So I think now, in the age we're living in, Everything that you say you believe is going to be tried and tested. And I'll tell you what, you better take this Bible and wrap it around you like chains. And beg God in your strength to hold you close and dear to the faith that you once had, lest you go astray. Psalm 78, verse 9. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. Look at that. They, Wayne, they joined a church. They said, we're the soldiers of the Lord. Look at us. We got bows. We're armed. We're marching to Zion. And look at what they did. When the battle hit, where'd they go? That, that makes me think of in the parable of the seed and the sower, where the seed that was sown on stony ground, you know, it sprang up. I got, a, I got an area in my yard that's right over my septic tank. And my septic tank is sitting on solid bedrock. And Brian, we is on, when we covered it up, we was only able to cover it up with that much dirt. So in the springtime, when we get a lot of rain... It's as green as everything else is. And then when July hits, I have a brown rectangle in my backyard of grass that used to be green. But because it was sown over stony ground, a concrete lid to my septic tank, because it was sown there, when the sun comes out and the rain dries up, it has no root. And it dies. And that's what happens to people. They come in. They get just a little bit of it. And they say, oh boy, I'm in here for, I'm here to hear forever. And then something hits them that they don't like. Something hits them that makes them mad. They hear the preacher preach something that, I mean, it just boils them. It just turns them. And they, when the, when the sun comes out and the battle starts, they leave. So look at verse 10. They kept not the covenant of God. God offered them a covenant, but they kept it not and refused to walk in his law. And they forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. Boy, isn't that true? We hit a patch of life where trouble hits us. And we think, I'm gone, I'm dead, that's it. I'm sunk, it's not, I'm not going to last. And what we did was we forgot about all the other times that we were in that same predicament and God brought us through. So what you do is, you get your Bible back out, and you read it, and you reread some things that you had underlined, reread some things you had marked, read some old notes that you got wrote in your Bible, read about some old, listen to some old sermons I preached 10 years ago or whatever, and you get that back in you, and you go, you know what, God brought me through the last time, He'll bring me through this one. And you just keep believing. You keep believing. Psalm 85, 9, Surely His salvation is nigh unto them that fear Him. That fear Him. Who in here is afraid of what God can do to you? You got it right. You got it right. Like Trish and Melissa, we were afraid of what mom would do to us. Still, still am, she says. 
2 Chronicles 34, 21, Go inquire the Lord for me and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us because our fathers have kept not the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. Our fathers turned back from God and God got them for it. Revelation 3. I'll give you a couple seconds. Revelation 3. Because, notice that word, because. Now there's a statement God's going to make here. He's going to make it, he's going to, he's going to show you why he's going to give you salvation. Because thou hast kept the word. Underline that. What did you keep? The works? You kept the word. Still believe the Bible. I called a family today. I think they're watching. They said that they, they honestly tried. They sent me a letter and they said they honestly tried to go and visit churches in their area to find one that still believed the Bible. And they couldn't find one. So they reached out to us and they said, can we be Bethel? I said, sound like me, you already are. Okay. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. See, I, I'm not kidding you. I believe. I, David, I see you back there shaking your head, nodding your head. I believe, brother, that a deception is going to come out on this world and it's going to mess everybody up. Cause. That's right. That false prophet does not drag everybody kicking and screaming to go get a mark. He causes them. Okay? Look, John 15. He said, this Jesus, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Now, who doesn't want Jesus loving them anymore? Believe it or not, I have heard people say, I don't want God anymore. I've heard them say it. Now, I think God is smart enough to know the difference between somebody who's just having a bad moment and it just spews out stuff and they when they come to they say you know I shouldn't have said that I think God knows the difference between those and the person who actually means it I think God's smart I don't think anybody fools God okay and I and I do I think sometimes we say things to God that we go, God, I'm sorry for saying that. But it's just, it's how we feel. And God loves us enough to endure that from us. Does he not? That's why he said, as the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Do we not have a Savior who puts up with us, who loves us like a husband loves his wife or a wife loves his husband? And they put up with each other. Well, how, how parents love children. And they know they're going to do wrong, but they love them anyway. We have a Savior like that. Why wouldn't you want to continue in that love? Some people don't. Acts 14. Look at this. The, they went around confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Keep going. Continue in it. That we, and here's, here it is. Here it is. That we must through much peace and joy and happiness enter into the kingdom of God. Is that what it says? Brian, it says, much tribulation. Who, who in here has had that before? You know what? God kept you. God kept you. Did he not? I mean, it was rough. You didn't like it. But you're better for it. You're better for it. Now, if God says, now, hang on, we're going to do this again tomorrow morning, you'd go, no, no. Not tomorrow morning. Somebody has told me this week, they said, 
it just keeps coming one thing after another. And I wept for that person because I know how that feels. And I just prayed that God would give them relief because then we get back on our feet and we're going, you know what? That wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. Continue. That's what the apostles said. Romans 11. Romans 11. Verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. See, God's both. is Oh, God is love. God would not, a loving God would not send me to hell. God is love, but God is just. I'm reasonably sure that there are judges who sit on the benches in America who are loving judges and understanding judges that people do dumb, stupid things every now and then that are illegal. And I'll give them another chance. But then they finally come to a place where they say, I've given you enough. This court is tired of seeing you come back in for the same thing. Ten years in prison might change your mind. Loving, but severe. So, he says, Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity. My goodness, in the gainsaying of Korah, the Bible says that the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up 250 men. Boom! And everybody else was going, Moses, we're on your side. Moses, we believe in God. That's severe, amen. For the ground to open up and swallow up 250 men all at once. And everybody's going, we're, that's revival time, amen. But then... But toward thee goodness, but what is that goodness conditioned on? Look at that next word, after the word after goodness. What is that next word? If. If. Thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And here's your example. You want an example? Here's your example. Here's Israel. Headed to the promised land. And they've seen every miracle that God's got in his basket. They've seen the outpouring of God. They've seen the goodness of God. That God's fed them every day with miracle, with miracle food every day. I mean, who gets food that falls down out of the sky? Who gets that? Nobody does. Okay? It, it'd be like uh, my version of winning the lottery ticket. I've always told you I would never buy a lottery ticket. If God wanted me to win the lottery ticket, I'd be driving down the road and the winning ticket would fly in my window. And God say, here it is. I would go, God, that came from you. It had to have. Okay? And they had food from heaven every day. They saw the pillar of cloud. They saw the pillar of fire. They saw the ground open up. They saw the Red Sea open up. They saw the, uh, Mount Sinai. They heard the voice of God. They, they had that with them every day. But they remembered not those things when it came to the guys coming back saying that land's full of giants and it's full of big walls and we can't, there's no way we can get in there. And they said, okay, let's turn back and go back to Egypt. That's your example. They did not continue in the goodness of God and God cut them off. Their carcasses fell in the wilderness. Colossians 1.23. Now, don't you dare, don't you dare accuse me of preaching a works salvation. Faith is not works. And conti continuing and keeping faith still isn't a work. It's believing what God said, and I still believe what God said. Listen, I've got it in my mind that something that is directly oppositional to the Word of God is going to fall down from the sky in the sight of all men, and all men's going to say, see, the Bible is wrong. And it's going to look like proof. And God's people are going to say, oh no, God doesn't lie. Will that be you? Does it scare you a little bit? Good, because that's the Spirit of God in you, the fear of the Lord. 
If it scares you a little bit, then you have, what you can do about it is fall on your face before God and cry. Maybe you might do a little fasting and praying and say, God, put peace in my heart that I'm, I know that when that day comes, I'm going to be on your side. God will bless that. Amen. How many of you know that? God will bless that. Colossians 1.23. There's that word if again. If. If ye continue in the what? Works. Nope. Faith. Grounded and settled. Who's got it settled? Who among us has got it settled in their mind that this Bible is right in everything that it Amen. says? You should, have, you should have seen it. Brother Edge talks about this a lot because the first time I met him was down at Oak Lane Church. And that was my first time down there. It was year, I think it was 99 or 2000. And... You know, I'm just kind of, I'm still green concerning the King James Bible, but I'm there. And Reg Kelly preached that message, um, oh, don't sell your vineyard. He preached that, and at the end of that message, I mean, he's got a room full of preachers, deacons, church leaders, and, and so on. People saying amen to everything that's said. And he said, I'm going to show you how mean I am. If you have it 100% settled that this Bible is the inerrant, inspired Word of God, I'm going to have you stand. Now, I'd listen to Reg preach three times, and I was scared of him as I was a bear. So I, I jumped to my feet, and he noticed that. To this day, he remembers that. Because I'm going, ain't no way in the world I'm going to give you any doubt about me. Because what happened after that message was some guys jumped Reg. And I thought we was all on the same page at that meeting. They jumped him. They were from a boy's home that had been founded by some, I won't give you the name, but it's somebody that, oh, he's great in the faith. But they didn't believe that the King James Bible was right in everything it said. And they jumped him after that. And I'm watching this thing, I'm going, boy, I'm glad that ain't me. I'm glad that ain't me. But what happened was, there was most of the people stood up. Most of the people stood up. But not all. Not all. So, are you grounded? And do you have it settled? And if you don't, do what I did. Get alone with God. This is what I told Brady and Bradley Crum to do. I said, you boys, chunk that New World Translation, get, get away from that Book of Mormon, and get away somewhere with a King James Bible, and pray and read until God fixes it in your heart that this Bible is right. And God did it with both of them. Okay? If you don't, if there is still some doubt, and I understand it, I do, because I've been through this. I've been through it. If you still have just this much doubt, watch this now. This is leaven. A little doubt is a little leaven. And the devil knows how to attack that one area that you're not sure about. <clears throat> now the whole thing's wrong. You don't believe any of it. That's, that happens. That happens. I knew a guy that he went to a fundamental Bible-believing church, and there was a man that was a deacon in that church. And I mean, King James Bible all the way, shouted, said amen, all this stuff. You know what he is now? A Catholic priest. A Catholic priest. Something got him. Get it settled. And be not moved away from the hope of what? The gospel. Look at what he linked it to. He linked it to the hope of the gospel. You see, are we in heaven yet? No. We've got a ways to go. Now, I wish that I was now in heaven. I wish I was. But I'm not. 
I've got a ways to go. And I'm telling you, I don't know how bad it's going to get. And I'm not sure how much I can take. But I'm telling you, I don't want to go to hell. Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Now, how was that gospel preached to you? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. First Timothy chapter 2. How long can I go? Listen, we didn't have church Sunday. Can, I, can you give me a little bit more time tonight? First Timothy 2.15. I lo- listen, I, I love the group home. I know you got to go. I love you. Don't, I, God bless you. Okay? Y'all be careful. 1 Timothy 2.15 Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Had a, a pastor call me yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Man, it's been a long week already. But we got to talking. He had, he had a question to ask me. He said, how, how, how can you answer these people that when you preach holy living to them, they accuse you of preaching work salvation. He said, Pastor Mike, I've heard you. I've heard you preach out of the Old Testament and how we ought to do this and how we ought to do that. He said, he said when I preach that, he said, I got a guy in my church that accuses me of preaching work salvation. And I said, you know, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But it doesn't stop there. You take a breath... And you read the rest of it. For we are His workmanship created unto what? Good works in Christ Jesus. When God recreated you and made you a new person, He really did mean for the old stuff to pass away and for you to do new stuff. Good stuff. Right stuff in your life. That's, it's, not the, it's not what's keeping you saved. It's the evidence that you are saved. I'm telling you, You don't say you're saved when you're an atheist, lesbian, witch. You don't say that. And some people do, believe it or not. There are Christian witches and Christian sodomites. Good grief. They're everywhere. And I'm just telling you, the the false doctrine is running over and is consuming those who said, Oh, I believe in God. It's eating them alive. Don't let that happen to you. Uh, 1 Timothy 4.16. This is what Paul said to Timothy, the young bishop. Timothy, take heed unto, your, unto thyself and unto the doctrine. You know what that means? Mike, you're the preacher. You're giving out to everybody. You better take in. You better take in. I've been through all this. I've been through all this. Where I gave out and gave out and didn't take in. And it ain't good. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. And do what? Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt what? What does he say here? Thou shalt both save. Because what good would it do, Trish? If you went to heaven and I didn't, that'd be embarrassing. It'd be worse than that. But that's the least of it. If the church made it to heaven, but the preacher didn't, because he didn't take heed to himself. So I spent. A lot of the day yesterday recording and editing and the same today and God made me stop and put into myself what I needed I'm glad he did that's why I'm all pumped 2nd Timothy 3 14 but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them do you not trust this book then continue trusting this book. Did this book not save you two weeks ago, three weeks ago, a month ago, a year ago? Did it not bring you out of the miry clay? It'll still do the same thing. God hadn't changed anything, has he? God's still in the saving business. Amen. First John 2, 24. 
Okay, I got, I got two more verses, then I'll quit. First, Tim, for, uh, first John 2, 24. Let that therefore abide in you. Let, that is your responsibility. You let it. You let it. Let Jesus, and that, when he said, let that therefore abide in you, that goes to John 15. John wrote John, and John wrote 1 John. And so John, I think, is connecting these two ideas, or the Holy Ghost is. In John 15, Jesus said, if ye abide in me, and I abide in you. Or then he said, my words abide in you. That means when you're having a tough time, Scripture takes over. Bible verses take hold of your life and the situation that you're going through. And then God does things that you're going, how in the world did that even happen? That is like Linda Toomey laying in that hospital. I mean sick. The flu is a terrible, terrible thing to get. And she's laying there sick as a dog telling me, I'm glad I got the flu because if it hadn't been for that, they wouldn't have found that blood clot in my leg. She's over there praising God. And I said, Linda, please get back on your feet and get over here and give one of those good testimonies you give. You're my favorite one. That woman's got faith, amen? amen. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. That's your salvation right there. That's the picture of it. And I'm, I'm not, I'm saying it again. You cannot be an atheist, lesbian, witch, or anything like that and say, Oh, I'm saved. I got saved when I was eight. I got saved when I was 12 at Bible camp. I went to that Bible camp one time. I went forward. They had me pray that prayer. They said, I'm saved. And they said, I couldn't lose it, so I can do whatever I want to. Listen, a saved man would never say that. He would never say that. A lost man would lie to everybody and to himself and say that, but not a saved man. A saved man knows that he's continuing. He knows he's in the Bible. He knows the Bible is in him. I in Christ and Christ in me. I don't understand all that, but I believe it. And that's how it works. You just, in your worst day, you say, I still believe God's word. In your best day, you say, I still believe God's word. When you're 95 years old, you say, I still believe God's word. I still believe it. But then you have those pitiful people who a little storm comes in, a little trial, a little grief, a little bit of, well, I don't like what that preacher said. I think we'll just stop going to him. You know, I was thinking about going to that other church. I like their music. A little bit of that. And they buzz out. That's not... That is not salvation. That's not what it looks like. That's not what the Bible says it is. Now, I'm not asking anybody to do some hard thing like climb the, if you climb the top of Mount Everest, then you'll be saved. What I'm telling you is on your worst day, even when it's self-inflicted on your worst day, When you've blown it with God and everybody else. And you say, I still believe God saves sinners. You got it. You got it. I just want to encourage you, people. Hang on to that book. It's all we have. You know what my, who was it told me this? Brian said to me, you know, I was upset you ain't been doing PMO, but that made me get my Bible out and read it instead. Yes. So I might take a vacation from PMO for about a month, get you guys back. No, I won't do that. I plan on doing it tomorrow. If, if, time, if the timing will work out, I plan on doing it tomorrow. I need it. Huh? Maybe not. Because I got so much stuff in me, I got to get it out. 
I got to talk through. I have, it helps me to talk through. PMO is my, is my, I'm laid back. I'm me. I'm not trying to put on some professional video. And when I'm able to talk out some things that I got in my head, it helps me. So if the timing works out tomorrow, if I can get here, on, even if I'm late, I'm going to do it. Okay? Because I got to get it out, and I love you people, and you, you guys keep me going. You really do. Because I'm telling you, sometimes you just feel like giving up and quitting. I, listen, I know all about it. I feel it. I get it. And I'm telling you, hang on this book, people. Hang on this book. Don't let it go. I know a guy is in hell tonight. I watched him as a boy in this church. I watched him serve God, and then I watched him fall back into the bottle. Roy fell back into the bottle. And they scooped his brains out of the back seat of his car. He didn't hang on. He didn't want to. You got to want it. You got to want it more than anything. Amen. God, listen, God will do the hard stuff. You got to want it. 